This video will walk you through running a discriminant analysis in Excel. We are using the data set train 10, uh, where our dependent variable, our Y variable, is employee performance. It is categorized as satisfactory, which gets a 1, or unsatisfactory, which gets a 0. And we're going to try to predict that based on the scores on two aptitude tests, test 1 and test 2. So that data is all here. Our first step is to sort the data by the dependent variable group. So notice I have this sorted here, pre-sorted, oh, come on, um, into 0 and 1. You can, you know, highlight your data, or you can highlight all of your data here. Um, sorry, go into data and sort, and then sort by, you could sort by group, value smallest to largest, and it will, you know, change that to have all zeros and then all ones, or you could have it the other way around. As long as you start off sorting it, it's fine. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay, next, regress the independent variables on the dependent variable. So go into data analysis, and down to regression. So you're going to run you know, essentially a regular regression here where your dependent variable is your categorical variable, your 0 or 1, whether or not their performance is satisfactory or not, based on their performance on these two tests. Okay. And we do have labels in there. I want to put this output on this sheet so I can find it. So I'm going to click right there and click OK. So now it's going to run my general regression. Then use the regression equation to predict the independent variable y hat given your specific, or sorry, to predict the dependent variable given your independent variable. So we're going to do a series of individual predictions in here. So I'm going to insert a new column in here and I'm going to call this y hat. So these are my predictions. I could also call it predictions if I really wanted to. Okay, so I am going to predict where they will be based on this intercept, and that's going to be constant, so I'm going to F for that, plus um, their score, their, the beta of test 1, so that's also going to be constant, so I'm going to F for that, times the individual score on test 1, plus the beta of test 2, again, that's going to be constant, so I F for it, times the individual score on test 2. Okay, and I'm going to carry that all the way down, and it's going to predict a series of zeros and ones. Now, I have to see, did I get it right or not? So I'm going to determine um, a cutoff point. The cutoff point C um, is classify, classifies, you know, whether or not you belong in a 0 or 1. Because these numbers may be rounded to 0 or 1, but they might not actually be zeros or 1s. So I can, let's go here. Um, let's see, for each of my individual, yeah, let's highlight all of this. I'm not really sure why it's not going out. Um, they're rounding to zeros or ones, but they're not actually giving me a value, an exact value of zero or one, because there's nothing that constrains Excel to necessarily do that. So here, you, we originally saw it rounded, I had set to round, but here are the actual y hat values that it's giving you. So what I need to do is determine a cutoff point, and I'm going to call that C. C is going to be based on the number in group zero, so the number of zeros, the number of ones, the average value of your discriminant score, uh, average discriminant score for group one, and then the average discriminant score for group two. Okay, so this is D1, let's do D0 bar first and D1 bar. Okay, so I need to figure out the number of zeros that I had. 
So I count this, okay, count those. Those are the number of zeros. And there were 20 zeros. And then I'm also gonna use the count function to count the number of individuals who um, received a satisfactory score. That was the number of ones. Okay, and there were 23 of those. Now I need to get the average discriminant score, or the average y hat, for each of those groups. So average of those who should be in group zero, what was the average y hat that I got there? And this is why I had originally divided my data into zeros and ones so that I could just go through and do these averages um, relatively easily. And then repeat the same thing, the average y hat for those who should have been in group one. Okay, enter, okay. So now I have that data, and I'm gonna use that to calculate something called C, which is gonna be my cutoff. So C is equal to, the numerator is N0 times uh, D0 bar, plus N1 times D1 bar, and that entire thing is my numerator, and then I'm gonna scale that by the number I have in each group, so divided by N0, sorry, click on there again, N0 plus N1. And again, this equation is, this equation is available on your PowerPoint slides, okay? So this gives me my cutoff point C, which I'm gonna get as 0.53. Now for, this is gonna be my classification that'll allow me to classify, should it be in group zero or one based on my prediction that I have here, um, that I got with my Y hat, because obviously my Y hats are not actually zeros or ones. So for anything less, any value less than that cutoff score, I'm gonna call it a zero. And for any value greater than that cutoff score, I am going to call it a one. All right, so I'm gonna go in here, insert, and let's see. So what do I predict here? So equals if, this value, I'm oh, sorry, backspace. If this value here is less than this value, and I'm gonna F for that because that's gonna remain the same, comma zero, otherwise one, because if it's less than, it should be in group zero. So carry that down. All right, so these are my actual predictions as to whether or not uh, they will fall into group zero or one. And then I'm gonna do a misclassification check. So how often did I get it wrong? Okay, so let's see, misclassification check. Come on, space. All right, my misclassification check. I am going to see whether or not I have things correct. So I'll just insert another column here and I'm gonna say correct. You can call it misclassification, you can call it whatever. So if this cell equals this cell, if my prediction is equal to the group it should have been in, comma, yes, otherwise, no. And I think I need to have these in, per, in uh, quotations, but we'll see. No, I didn't like that, okay. So put these over here. This needs to be in quotes.
And then, and so it's telling me, did I get it correct? Well, for the first three observations, no, I didn't get it correct, but not a, a large number here. I have a whole bunch of yeses, so it doesn't look like I did so bad. Um, let's actually, you know, to evaluate my performance here, I would kind of need to know the number of yeses and nos. So number no, number yes. Okay, and then I'm just going to count the number of no's. So count if. This array right here, this correct column. Um, comma. Hold on, I'll have to put this whole thing in. So count if. That range, well, I didn't really need a parentheses around that, but whatever, that's okay. Um, says no, and then count if that same range, comma, yes. And then I'm going to figure out my percentage of, my percentage correct. So my percentage correct is going to be um, my yeses divided by, you know, my total. So this number, okay, percent correct divided by my total observations here, and that needs to be in parentheses to add these two and indicate that they are going to be my denominator. And I'll put that in percentage notation. So that says that my model correctly predicted whether or not you would receive a satisfactory score roughly 79% of the time. So it's not great, but it's not really all that bad. So I can see in here how I would do any individual predictions. Uh, my interpretations and everything, since this is essentially just a regular regression, are all going to be the same. So my interpretation um, for the beta of test one, for each additional point scored on test one, um, it's kind of hard. I can't really say that, you know, it, this is kind of like it increases your likelihood of being in the satisfactory group by 0 0.06 is, you know, essentially the interpretation, but this is basically just used for predictive purposes. So given any individual test score, I am then able to make a prediction, um, this y hat, then based on that c, that discriminant score, um, I'm able to, you know, fill in whether or not, based on my model, I predict you would be in group zero or group one. So this is essentially there just for predictive purposes. Um, I can, however, use my p-values to see whether or not each test is significant, statistically significant. So it looks here like your score on test one is statistically significant, but not your score on test two. So that's how we use discriminant analysis. Okay, and I will... Stop my recording.